the next presentation. We have a lot of women here today, which is very nice because some days were really dominated by men. Um, next presentation is Closing the Loop of Fiber Composite Sports Post Using Digital Tools. And we have here with us Franziska Link, Senior Consultant, Digital and Innovation, Rambol. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. This stage is yours. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for having us. I'm here today with my colleague Felicitas, who will also be on the panel later. Um, and very interesting to hear about the EU's approach to tackle the issue of circularity in the voting industry. Uh, very timely, we also did a study on this situation in Germany, so on a country level. And as you maybe have seen in Philip's presentation earlier, Germany was on the left side of the graph, so one of the key countries where we should have a look at. Um, and also, of course, not only the EU, but also the German Federal Environment Agency is looking at the issue of what we're going to do with all the boats that are standing here today in 25 to 60 years when they reach end of life, and what we're going to do with all the boats that already reach end of life today and in the upcoming years. So uh, we were commissioned with finding answers to this one question, which is how to dismantle and recycle sport boats in Germany more efficiently. Uh, and when I say we, it's two Fraunhofer Institutes and Rambol. And uh, if you're into offshore wind, uh, you might have heard about Rambol already, uh, since this is one of our core businesses, so we are also a bit familiar already with uh, fiber composite materials. Uh, but actually, we do much more than that. So we're more than uh, 17,000 employees in 35 countries worldwide. Uh, it's originally a Danish engineering architecture and consultancy company and active in seven core markets, uh, which are buildings, transport, energy, water, architecture and landscape, and then the two units that worked on this study, which are environment and health and management consulting. And in all of our uh, studies, we aim to be the partner for sustainable change, and obviously in the sport boats industry, uh, there's much potential in sustainability and innovation. So we worked in this topic together with uh, environmental consultants and uh, experts from the digitalization team. And yeah, we explored this topic for the context of Germany, and that's also what I'm going to present today. So the recycling of sport boats in Germany, as you might be familiar with, is a very complex matter. Um, but first, I will present you some numbers. <laughs> so why did we even look at this problem? And why did we look at the problem now? So first of all, in the 60s and 70s, uh, manufacturers started using fiber-reinforced plastics more and more, especially glass fiber-reinforced plastics, uh, to produce sport boats, not only in Germany, but also in the EU and in general. And these boats will reach end of life today or have already reached end of life. So to put some numbers on this, uh, there are estimations that around uh, almost 4,000 sport boats reach end of life each year in Germany and are being disposed or recycled. And um, we estimate that there is a potential of 8,500 tons of glass fiber reinforced plastics in these boats. But on top of that, there are estimates that more than 20,000 boats uh, are still somewhere in Germany on land or in waters, not being used anymore, potentially dysfunctional. And that's an additional 57,000 tons of glass fiber reinforced plastics not being used at the moment. And of those more than 20,000 boats, we estimate that around 10,000 boats, it's not even clear who the owner of those boats is, so who should take responsibility of, maybe you have seen some boats somewhere on land or in water and they already look really dysfunctional, but maybe it's not even clear who has to take responsibility. So that's one of the many challenges we face. So first of all, there's an barely any regulation in Germany uh, in this regard, for example, the registration of sports boats is mandatory for boats in inland waters and also from a certain length, which is, I think, 15 meters, but not for all boats in the sea. This means we do not have many reliable numbers to base our predictions on or to calculate any kinds of statistics, which makes it really hard. Also, there is no regulation for the dismantling, recycling and disposal of boats. For example, uh, some of the different uh, material types that we have in boats in Germany do not even have a specific waste code, and instead we use the waste codes of the uh, car industry, which we are really familiar with in Germany, but we don't have any specific ones for boats. Uh, secondly, the recycling process of boats is immensely complex, as you might have heard already. 
there's no standardized approach on how to recycle all these different kinds of boats. Of course, there are also many types of boats. And of course, after production, they may also get modified manually. So it's maybe also really hard and impractical to have a standardized approach. But this means that, for example, in Germany, we have very few specialized companies that have skills and know-how and experience and in dismantling those boats. Um, that's really a chicken and egg problem because also there is not so much demand in recycling those boats. So the total number of boats being recycled is small as well. And thus, it's not an, a really economically attractive business yet. Um, on top, the recycling process, of course, bears a lot of environmental issues, especially when cutting fiber reinforced plastics or with all the ha hazardous substances and liquids. And the third and related challenge is basically the high costs for the last owner of a boat. So if you decide voluntarily as an owner to recycle your boat and to bring it to a recycling site or dismantling site, you bear the costs yourself. And of course, you might be able to resell some of the reusable parts on the secondary market, but still uh, there is no financial scheme over the life cycle of a boat. Of course, all of these factors are highly interdependent, reinforce each other, which makes the issue even more complex. Uh, but of course, we didn't stop here. Uh, we also looked at some steps of how we could improve the situation. So the first thing we did was to develop some checklists, or maybe we can call them um, practical guidelines, for three different steps in the process. One is inspection, one is drainage, and one is disassembly of boats. And I will walk you quickly through some use cases. So when a dismantling or recycling company gets an order to pick up a boat somewhere, they might want to know some basic data to organize transport, for example, or to estimate the costs also. And that's what the inspection checklist is for. And we can have a quick look in it. It's basically just a checklist with all the interesting data or the needed data that the company needs and can get from the owner of the boat. So it's general questions about uh, the measurements, the weight, um, the conditions of the different parts of the boat. And all of this information can be gathered in a structured way in the inspection checklist. Then once the company accepts the order, they start with drainage and removal of hazardous substances. And this can be all kinds of liquids, such as oil, fuel, water, and so on. So the checklist for drainage gives an overview on what kind of liquids to look out for and how to remove them. And then the third checklist is when the recycling company starts to dismantle or disassemble the boat. Sometimes also the owners start themselves uh, disassembling the boats already. So here you can basically have a step-by-step -step guideline on how to dismantle boats. And of course, as I already said, the challenge is that there are many different kinds of boats out there. So this is just a general guideline. And of course, each individual case has to be to considered. Um, we included the materials here that are usually in those boats. We included uh, disposal obligations in Germany in the last column. So this should just be some kind of overview to make the market entry also easier. And now you might think, is this the digital tools that they talked about in the beginning? Well, yes and no. I can walk you through our second solution space. And of course, we think that there is potential in the data on sport boats, not only in Germany, but also in the EU. Uh, we ha have some of the data already. We don't have some of the data yet. But maybe you have heard about the dig digital product passport already. I think it was also mentioned in the presentation before. So the idea is quite simple. You have a product, any kind of product. The manufacturer prints a QR code on it or something similar. And you can scan it with your mobile device. And then you get some kind of information that is interesting for you as an actor in the life cycle. So for example, in general, what material is my product made of? Uh, what's the carbon footprint of my product? Where should I go if I want to dispose it? Where can I find re um, like parts for, from the secondary market? All these kinds of information. So now imagine we had something similar for the sport boats industry. As an owner, for example, you could get information on basic data, such as size or weight or manufacturer, manufacturer, which is also interesting for a recycling company, which we talked about in the inspection checklist. Then as a recycling company, you could get data on material and substances and also instructions on how to dismantle the boats and what to do with old materials. Basically, an extension of the drainage and disassembly checklist. As a manufacturer, you're not only a data provider, but you could also get numbers on how long, or how long the lifetime of your boats is 
and if there are any kind of reusable parts after recycling the boats, you could buy them back, basically. So imagine we started collecting the data on all these boats that are here today, and then step by step extend this database and have a digital product passport. This would hopefully make our challenges a bit easier in some years from now. So to sum it up, we are convinced that there are opportunities in closing the loop of fiber composite sport boats in Germany. And we recommend working on three areas. The first one uh, is a bit discussable, I guess, because standardized processes, as I said, is really hard to have, but maybe it's simplified processes, or at least, for example, introducing waste codes in Germany for the sport boats industry. The second part is that we want to encourage a discussion on registering all sport boats in Germany or in the EU, um, because this would make also um, collecting data much easier. And then the last part, which I already introduced quickly, is that we encourage the development of a modular data concept to make it easier to care for future boats, but also already gather data and experience on old boats that are being recycled today. This could be a sustainable solution for the sport boats industry in Germany and in the EU. So if you're interested in more, and if you're really quick, you can scan this QR code and send me an email, and I will invite you to our final technical discussion of our study. Otherwise, I'm also here in the audience, so you can approach me later, um, and I will send you um, the link for our online meeting, which takes place on the 9th of March in the morning, uh, where we will discuss the whole study. And if you have any questions, uh, any disagreements, or you have a brilliant idea on how we could overcome these challenges. You're very welcome to join. Um, yeah, and we would be happy to see you there. So uh, thank you very much for your interest, and I hope we have a nice panel now. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Francisca. It's all about data, or a lot at least. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>